NASA has launched laser beams at the moon. It was rolling on the moon one day. At a time when countries were showing off their strength through space exploration, the U.S. did something historic. They sent three astronauts on a mission called Apollo 11, and these astronauts became the first to walk on the moon. When Neil Armstrong and his colleague Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon during this mission in 1969, they left behind a strange device. And surprisingly, this tool is still working today, 50 years later. So what exactly is this tool, and how is it still functioning today? Join us as we take a look at the incredible device and how it is still working today. The Moon, Earth's closest celestial neighbor, has captivated the human imagination for countless generations. Throughout history, people have been enchanted by its shimmering presence in the night sky, often attributing mystical and cultural significance to its phases and appearance. However, the fascination with the Moon reached new heights when humanity set its sights on reaching its surface. The monumental feat was achieved in 1969 when two American astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, became the first humans to walk on the moon as part of the historic Apollo 11 mission. This ambitious goal of sending astronauts to the moon was set forth by U.S. President John F. Kennedy in a remarkable speech to a joint session of Congress on May 25, 1961. He declared, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. This audacious aspiration was spurred by the Cold War rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union, as both nations competed to demonstrate their technological and scientific prowess. At the time, the United States was playing catch-up in the space race, with the Soviet Union having achieved significant milestones, including launching the first artificial satellite, Sputnik, in 1957, and sending the first human, Yuri Gagarin, into orbit in 1961. Kennedy's call to action galvanized the nation, igniting a wave of innovation and collaboration among scientists, engineers, and researchers. Over the next few years, a dedicated team of international experts, led by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, meticulously worked on the Apollo program. The program included a series of progressively complex missions aimed at testing and perfecting the technology required for a lunar landing. In 1966, the first unmanned Apollo mission was conducted to assess the structural integrity of the launch vehicle and spacecraft combination. The successful culmination of these efforts came on July 20th, 1969, when Apollo 11's lunar module, named Eagle, safely touched down on the moon's surface. Neil Armstrong's iconic words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, resonated across the world. When they landed on the moon all those years ago, the two astronauts placed a tool on the moon, and that tool is still working today. This amazing tool is called a Laser Ranging Retro Reflector, LRRR. It might sound like a mouthful, but it's actually a pretty clever device. Think of it as a special group of mirrors that's set up in a way to point back at Earth. This LRRR is made up of cubes of fused silica, a type of material that's good at bouncing back light. So how does this work? Well, scientists on Earth send powerful lasers towards the moon, and these lasers hit the LRRR. Now, instead of the lasers scattering in different directions, the LRRR reflects the lasers right back to where they came from. This reflection helps scientists measure the exact distance between the moon and the Earth. But why is knowing the distance so important? Well, it helps us understand a lot of things about space. For example, it helps scientists study how the moon moves around us and how Earth and the moon interact with each other. It's like having a cosmic measuring tape that stretches all the way to the moon. To measure the distance, scientists time how long it takes for the laser light to travel to the moon and then come back. This timing is super precise, so they can figure out the distance with incredible accuracy. In fact, the difference between their measurement and the actual distance is only about six inches at most. That's like being able to measure a huge football field and being off by just a tiny bit. The concept of measuring the distance between Earth and the Moon goes beyond just a single moment's measurement. 
What truly holds significance is the ability to track and understand the variations in this distance with a level of precision as fine as 6 inches or even better. Over an extended period of months and years, these minute changes in distance can yield valuable insights and answers to a multitude of intriguing questions about the dynamics of our celestial neighborhood. James Fowler and Joseph Wampler wrote in the March 1970 issue of Scientific American that the important quantity, however, is not the absolute distance between the Earth and the Moon at some particular instant, but the variations in distance measured with 6-inch precision or better over a period of months and years. Such variations can be studied to answer a number of important questions. Fowler is the one who conceived the idea behind the LRRR. In addition to the LRRR placed on the moon by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, four other retroreflectors have been positioned there. The Apollo missions from the United States contributed three retroreflectors, while the Soviet Union's Luna missions placed two on the lunar surface. The Soviet Union's first retroreflector was called the Lunacod 1, and it was placed on the moon on November 17, 1970. It had eight wheels and a big lid that could open and close. It also had a cone-shaped antenna, a spiral-shaped antenna, four cameras, and some tools to study the moon's soil and rocks. It had a solar panel on the lid to get power from the sun during the day and a heater to keep warm at night. The heater used a radioactive material called polonium-210. The retroreflector was carried by a spacecraft called Luna 17, and two days after its launch, Luna 17 reached the moon's orbit and circled it for four days. Then, it fired its engines to slow down and land on the moon. It landed in a flat area called Mare Imbrium, the Sea of Rains, on November 17, 1970. The robot rolled out of the spacecraft and started its mission. This retroreflector explored the moon for almost a year from November 1970 to September 1971. It drove for more than 10 kilometers, 6 miles, and sent back many pictures and data about the moon. It also placed a special mirror on the moon that could reflect laser beams from Earth. The mirror helped scientists measure the distance between Earth and the moon very accurately. Lunacod 1 was supposed to work for only three months, but it lasted much longer. However, after a while, it stopped sending signals on September 14, 1971, 321 days on the moon. It basically went missing, and no one knew exactly where it was until 2010, when a powerful telescope on Earth found it again. So, it was lost for almost 40 years. While these retroreflectors continue to function effectively, not all missions aimed at installing similar instruments on the moon have been successful. The Israeli-led Bereshit mission and the India's Chandrayaan-2 mission, for example, both launched in 2019 and were notable attempts to join the ranks of successful retroreflector placements. Regrettably, these missions encountered technical challenges during their descent to the lunar surface, resulting in crashes rather than successful landings. Despite these setbacks, these missions have contributed valuable lessons and insights to the ongoing exploration of space. So, how come the laser-ranging retroreflector from the Apollo 11 is still working? Well, this is because of its ingenious design and the remarkable properties of its materials. Unlike many technological devices, this retroreflector is entirely passive, meaning it requires no external power source or regular maintenance to function effectively. It simply reflects the laser beams that are sent from Earth back to their source. Fused silica, a type of glass that can withstand the challenging lunar environment, offers exceptional durability and resistance to the extreme conditions found on the Moon's surface. The reflector is also mounted on a folding support structure that allows it to be aimed and aligned toward Earth. Having persisted for over five decades, this experiment stands as one of the longest-running and most successful scientific endeavors in history. Its data has contributed not only to our understanding of the Earth-Moon distance and lunar orbit dynamics, but also broader scientific insights, such as advancements in our knowledge of Earth's rotation and tests of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. So, what do you think about this? Let us know down in the comments section.